Hey, it's Sherry. Welcome back to Canterbury Cottage. I have been so busy this week decorating my home for the holidays and turning some of my recent thrift store finds into some amazing decor for my own home. I recently went out Christmas shopping and I stopped in at Home Goods. And while that store has some beautiful things, none of it really spoke to me. And so as you're watching my video and wondering about some of my decor, I can assure you that 95% of it was purchased at a thrift store. So if you're ready to see what I did with my recent thrift store finds, let's get started. When I saw these glass light shades at the thrift store, they reminded me of bells. And so I thought, since they were only 52 cents each, I would see what I could do with a little glue and paint. First, I sprayed them with some white zinser primer, and then I applied a coat of mineral chalk paint. To give them some depth, I applied elephant chalk paint as the second coat, and then applied another coat of mineral chalk paint on top of that. I lightly distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of antiquing wax, dabbing off the excess with a rag. I wanted to be able to hang the bells, so I created a loop with some twine, which I hot glued to the glass knob at the top of the shade. Then, using a long strand of twine, I glued the end around the loop and then continued to go around the shade, hot gluing it every so often until the top portion was completely covered with twine. Because I wanted the bells to actually ring, I strung three jingle bells on a loop of twine and then hot glued the knot of the twine inside the shade. To dress the bells up a bit, I hot glued on some scraps of greenery and red berries, and of course, I added gingham bows to both. I wasn't loving the color, so to make them look more like aged brass, I dabbed a light coat of gold metallic paint over the bells. I think these would look super cute hanging in the center of a large wreath, but for now, I'm hanging them from the ladder in my library. When I saw these Noel houses at the thrift store, I thought, great, somebody's already cut and sanded these wood blocks for me. I gave them a coat of white zinser primer, and then I distressed the edges using a Dollar Tree sanding block. Because I planned on hanging these, I drilled a hole in the top of each wood block. I measured the height and width of each block and then printed out images of four pages from a vintage Christmas book in sizes to fit each block. I applied a thin, even coat of Mod Podge to the wood block and to the back of the image, and then I applied the image to the block, carefully smoothing out any wrinkles or bubbles. I let the Mod Podge dry for a couple of hours, and then, using scissors, I cut around each block, removing the excess paper. Then I smoothed out the edges using a Dollar Tree sanding block, and I cut out the hole at the top with an X-Acto knife. Then I applied a coat of Mod Podge over the image to protect it. I ran an extra long strand of twine through the hole at the top for hanging purposes, and then I cut up some scraps of greenery and berries to attach to the top of the little house. I just stuck them in the drilled hole, and then I added a couple drops of hot glue through the hole in the back to hold them in place. And of course, to finish it off, I had to add a little bow.
I wanted to make some custom Christmas art this year. And of course, I'm going to be putting that art in thrifted frames. This pretty vintage frame was falling apart. And so first of all, I needed to reinforce the corners with some staples. Then I applied a coat of antiquing wax to hide some of the nicks and chips and to tone down the gold paint a bit. I sent this vintage book image to the Walmart Photo Center and printed out a small poster which cost under $5. I cut a piece of hard cardboard that I had on hand to fit the size of the back of the frame and then using glue stick I attached my poster to the cardboard. There was nothing in the frame to hold my picture in place, and so I just went around the edges and stapled the poster to the frame. I printed a second, larger poster using an image that I created in Canva. For this image, I simply applied poster tape to the back and then stuck it to my wall inside a vintage frame that was already hanging on my wall. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know about the beaded car seat cover that I thrifted several months ago. Well, I am still not out of beads, so I thought I might as well make a Christmas garland using some. When threading beads, I always use florist wire. It is so much easier to work with than thread or twine. To add some interest to this garland, I cut some white pine cones off of an old candle ring that I had and inserted pine cones every 10 beads. I stuck the wires attached to each pine cone into the nearest bead to create a cleaner look. I draped the garland across the front of my mantle, just using the things that were already there to hold it in place. I recently purchased an oversized light bulb at the thrift store for 50 cents, but when I got it home, it didn't fit in a regular sized lamp socket, so I decided to turn it into a sparkly snowball. I covered it with spray adhesive and then sprinkled on iridescent glitter. I followed that with a clear top coat to keep the glitter from rubbing off. I had been trying to come up with an inexpensive idea for an advent calendar for kids when I came across these favor boxes that were eight for a dollar at Dollar Tree. To dress them up, I took old wrapping paper and Christmas cards and cut them into three inch squares. 
Then I used glue stick to apply the squares to the front and back of the bags. I recommend applying the image while the bag is flat and then folding it into its box shape after the images are glued on. You could use stickers or write out the number on each bag. I cut out ornament shapes on my Cricut machine and then used baker's twine to attach the little ornament number to the top of each bag. I found a cute but misshapen metal basket at the thrift store that I thought would be perfect to hold my little favor bags. A few wax with a mallet and it was almost as good as new. In the kitchen, I like to use food-related items to create Christmas decor, so I picked up this muffin tin for 97 cents to hang behind my stove. I printed out these vintage Christmas images to put in the back of each cup. Once they were cut out, I pressed them into each cup, creating a crease line that I could cut along to create a perfect fit. I applied glue stick to the back of the paper and then adhered the images to the muffin tin. Then, using hot glue around the edge of the paper, I attached a strip of pipe cleaner. Then I glued on some additional embellishments, things like a tiny tree, fake snow, some jingle bells. I added a bow using ribbon that reminded me of baker's twine. I cut the words Merry Christmas from an old Christmas card and hot glued that across the tin. You could use images from Christmas cards in the cups instead of printing them out, but I didn't have many left after making the advent calendar bags. I also purchased this $2 cutting board and I sanded the cup marks off of the back side. Then I printed out a Christmas image on fabric transfer paper. I cut it out and pressed it with a hot iron. I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not, but it mostly worked. There were a few spots where the transfer didn't stick to the wood. So I went over it with my heat gun and that adhered those loose spots. Then I went over the image with a light coat of Mod Podge to make sure that it stayed adhered. I applied some linseed oil to the raw wood to help protect it. Although this cookie jar is not technically Christmas decor, I thought it was cute, and because it had green shutters, I thought by adding a few red and green accessories nearby, it would look Christmassy. Plates are another great idea for kitchen decor. I got these woodland plates and the plate rack at the thrift store all for under $10. I actually purchased four plates, but I chose not to use the one with the picture of a wild boar on it. I stuck a couple sprigs of greenery into the plate rack 
just to make the plates look even more festive. Last year, I was lucky enough to spot this Johnson Brothers plate for only When you go to the thrift store as often as I do, sometimes you get really lucky. On one visit, I found a Career and Ives plate with the Winter American Homestead scene, one of my favorites. And on another visit, I found a ceramic house that looked strangely familiar to me. And then I realized it was a replica of the house in the Courier and Ives picture. I love reindeer decor for the holidays. I found these two metal deer separately on trips to the thrift store and spray painted them black to create a set. This year, I tied plaid bows on them to go with the decor in my kitchen. I also cut apart this thrifted wreath to create some greenery to put around the reindeer. This was much cheaper than buying several fake stems at the store. I like to pick up candle rings and use them as small wreaths. I just added a velvet bow to this $2 thrifted candle ring and attached it to a lantern. As a finishing touch for this vignette, I printed out Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer sheet music and stuck it in a clipboard and then just propped the clipboard up near the two metal reindeer. Over the years, I have found the most amazing fake flowers at the thrift store, like this vase of tulips for only $7.99. Often, all they need is a good dusting and to be placed in a different container. A few years ago, I splurged on this vintage red metal cooler at an auction and paid $50 for it. I put some books inside and then sat my thrifted tulip vase on top of the books. I tied a green candle ring to the front to break up all of the red. In addition to fake flowers, I also often find wonderful wreaths at great prices at thrift stores, like this red berry wreath. To give it a good refresh, I fluffed up the branches and cut off any damaged berries, and then I cleaned it by spraying on a silk plant cleaner. I cut up some eucalyptus stems that I had and using florist wire attached them to the wreath, apparently while my camera was turned off. I'd love to know if I shared any ideas today that you'd like to try out for yourself. 
Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. See you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm.